السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Brothers and sisters, welcome to another live edition of your program Ask Huda Today is the 23rd of the blessed month of Ramadan May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept I hope you enjoyed your qiyam last night and I hope you exert uh, the maximum effort in making sincere dua for the whole ummah. As Allah Azza Jalla an yataqabbala minna minkum. May Allah accept from all of us. Our phone numbers beginning with the area code are 0020-1125-00-8679. Alternatively, area code 0020-1002-246-4583. My Facebook page is the R Muhammad Salah official. Uh, I have a few pending questions. Also, I do have some callers waiting on the line. So let me tackle a few questions qu- quickly. Sister Fatima uh, asks, can I accept a gift from someone who renounced Islam? Okay, generally, is it permissible to accept a gift from a non-Muslim? Yes, it is permissible to accept gifts from non-Muslims. And the Nabi Wasallam did so. Uh, what about... An apostate, somebody who renounced Islam, who is a Muslim and converted, for instance. In this case, we will look. In this case, we look into the benefit-risk issue. That, of course, once it is confirmed, this person have already uh, renounced Islam or apostated. Not just mere rumors or people talk about it. Once it is confirmed, we we'll look at the maslaha, the benefit, the benefit-risk issue. There are some people whom actually the best treatment for them is to boycott them, so that they recognize that they did something. Uh, very severe and grieve. But if uh, you socialize with them and everything is normal, then they do not feel any pain. They think that they're fine. They're free to do whatever they want to do. And that was a big mistake that Banu Israel did. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that what really destroyed them. Uh, but if you think that by accepting the gift and open a channel of conversation with this person, that you may do what is known as in ayah number 60 of Surah At-Tawbah, وَالْمُؤَلَّفَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ تَأْلِيفُ الْقُلُوبُ To attract his heart so that he would get to hear from you, know or you actually hear from him or her what happened, what was the cause. Because most of the time that happens as a result of misconception. Something vague that the person does not know its reality and the person needs a clarification. So in this case, it would be accepted. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Umm Muhammad from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, uh, yesterday I asked you about a marriage proposal for my daughter of an IT engineer from USA. Yeah. So, um, yes, my another question is that I talked to her mother and it seems that they do not avoid and care about the interest. She says that it is not possible to avoid interest in the United States as there are credit cards and so many other things. And the mother herself was a banker and they do not seem to care much about the interest. Whereas we are very careful about interest and Alhamdulillah we have raised our children on this halal. So uh, that's what I am. I want to ask you. Sister Abu really Muhammad, scary. to be honest with you, I know that you wanted me to say no, reject the proposal. Well, the answer is delivered yesterday. If you just examine my answer, and I, I, I give some elements and means of guidance that can assist you in making the decision. But do not expect me to say no, straightforward. You can conclude it from my uh, advice. Barakallahu fiki. Jazakallahu khair. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Irfan from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Brother Irfan. Uh, how are you, sir? 
I'm just fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. If you uh, do me a favor and mute your TV, I will appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Um, is it valid if I give my zakat mal directly to the poor people without uh, uh, giving it to the organization who distributes this uh, Yes, Japan. of course, Arfan. If you know poor people whom you trust that they're poor, it would be even better if you uh, hand over your zakat al mal to them directly without going through an intermediary, whether an organization or whatever. Any other questions? Okay, that's it. Thank you, brother okay. Arfan. Barakallah fiqh. Zakallah khaira. Sister Layla uh, says in her question from yesterday's pending questions, I have savings for more than a year. How do I compute the zakat? And can I sponsor orphans with the zakat amount? Okay. First of all, if you do have what is known as an nisab, certain amount of money that you maintain, you say that for over a year. Alhamdulillah, shukla. You're not supposed to keep it for over a year without zakat. You suppose once that the year rounds the lunar year, like you say uh, the beginning of Ramadan, you normally pay your zakat, and Masha'Allah, you established the nisab which is equivalent to the value of 85 gram of gold or the value of 595 gram of silver, whichever is lesser in value, because this is more beneficiary for the poor, of course. So if you had this amount, if you had 10 grams, and you maintained it for a whole year, whether in saving or investment, uh, if it increases, once the year rounds, you pay the zakah on the entire amount, inshallah. If you lose some of it, but it's still above, equivalent to a nisab, or above to a nisab, then it is zakatable as well. You can distribute it amongst all the categories of the eligible recipients. In ayah number 60 of Surah At-Tawbah, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ Poor and poor. وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا والمؤلفة قلوبهم وفي الرقاب والغارمين وفي سبيل الله وابن السبيل فريضة من الله والله عليم حكيم. We explained that before repeatedly. Or you can simply give it to an organization that does this on your behalf or in your state. You said, can I sponsor an orphan with the zakah amount? Absolutely, if the orphan is poor. Because there are some orphans whose parents left plenty of money for them. So they actually have to pay zakah on their wealth. Then in this case, you cannot give them zakah because they are not eligible. إنما الصدقات للفقراء والمساكين. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Sister Jumana from United Arab Emirates. Um, Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome to Ask Kuda. Thank you. My question is, um, is it hard for an 18-year-old boy to go pray in the mosque when the mosque is like 50 meters away from the home? Okay, you said the and mosque is... he doesn't, does he get sent? Uh, you said the mosque is nearby home? Yeah, like very, very close. Okay. Yes. Does he get sent if he doesn't pray there? Okay, barakallah feek. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum, Umar from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Sheikh, I have a question. Uh, uh, regarding that, uh, we see that so many people are being massacred in Palestine, in Gaza, by the Kufar. So, as common Muslims, we feel we feel very bad. So, what uh, what do you suggest that we should do in such case? How how can we make? Uh, what can we do as as their brothers and over other parts of the world? Again, the toughest question ever. Allahu Musta'an. I wish I, uh, I had uh, control over it or I had any authority where I would not hesitate to uh, assist our brothers and sisters physically, militarily, by any and every possible means. So this is an intention that every Muslim has to formulate. For instance, assisting them by giving them means of livelihood, provision, medications, medical assistance. We have seen non-Muslims the Norwegian doctor is flying over. MashaAllah, I, I really would like to salute and thank the militians and the militian president. May Allah bless them. 
they did not only protest, rather they sent tens of doctors, they sent plenty of provision, mashallah. But the problem is with those who are banning them from reaching them, aligning up with the Zionists and assisting them. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are equal. لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا You will never find people who truly believe in Allah and in the last day they love and they have affection for those who challenge Allah and His Messenger for those who harass the believers, persecute them, kill them even if they are their parents, their children, their spouses, their brothers and sisters, their family members. What about if it is known to every Muslim that who is our enemy? Who is our enemy? Do you guys know? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? So we as laymen, as oppressed as those brothers and sisters, because unfortunately, we can't do anything other than dua. And if there is a possible mean of uh, giving uh, you know, financial support to them, then we should do that. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to support them and grant them victory. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy the perpetrators and their allies and supporters. Whether of Muslims or of any other religion. Those who support the perpetrators and the enemies of Allah and those who suppress Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten their destruction. Allahumma ameen. May Allah give victory to the weak and oppressed. May Allah support the Muslim ummah and united. And give us rightly guided rulers. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Sulaiman from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now I'm calling from Dubai. I wanted to ask that about a divorce. Once you divorce your wife and she get married to somebody else, are you still responsible to the children? Okay, you let's not use the... Suleiman, let's not use the second pronoun. Use the third pronoun. Don't say you divorce your wife. Say somebody else divorced his wife. Oh. Uh, okay, okay, I understand. Thank you mm. so much for that, Shaykh. Thank you for okay. that. Okay, Barakallahu feek. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Waqarah, At-Talaqu marratani fa-imsakum bi-ma'roofin aw tasrihum bi-ihsan. At-Talaq, man has a right to divorce his wife twice, and these two times are revocable. Raj'i. If within the idda of وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءَ The divorced women should wait in waiting period of three quru, plural of qur, whether it is the menses or the purification that follows the menses. In this case, لَا يَحِلُّ لَهُنَّ أَنْ يَكْتُمْنَ مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ فِي أَرْحَامِهِنْ If she is pregnant, she must announce that she's pregnant because the idda will be extended to the longer period which is given birth. Their husbands do have the right to take them back to their marriage life if they intend reconciliation. The spouses the wives do have rights similar to those which are due upon them towards their husbands. So at talaq maratan is talking about the revocable divorce, which is three periods, three menses, or three purifications. And in Surah at talaq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that for women who do not for women who do not experience the period anymore, Wallah min al mahidi, their idda will be three months. Three lunar months we would not go by the period or the menses. If the husband happened to divorce his wife the third time, then this divorce is final. Final, in a sense, it's irrevocable. That even if they both wish to reconcile, they cannot do that even by a new marriage contract. Unless and until, لَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدُ 
حتى تنكح زوجا غيره until she remarries to somebody else and this marriage is not pre-planned this is a regular marriage she did not agree with a third person to marry on papers or to consummate the marriage for one night then to divorce her so that she would be lawful to the first husband who divorced her no this is illegitimate and rather it is just to do it as a regular process normal a woman was divorced and the divorce was irrevocable and now she wants to move on with her life she married somebody else but if she was divorced from the new husband and the idda is over then the very first husband showed interest and she agreed and they want to remarry they can remarry with a new marriage contract you see how complicated it is it is complicated why in proportion with the crime of consuming all the chances of divorce the man must be wise enough to know when to say it whenever it is indeed the last resort may Allah guide us what is best Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Muhammad from Emirates, United Arab Emirates. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Naam. Shaykh, I have a question. If, uh, if our prayers are not answered, uh, what should we do? How, why our prayers sometimes are not answered? And how, do we, how can we know that where we are going wrong? Okay, I got your question now. <clears throat> Thank you, Brother Muhammad. That, that question I answered many times. And we refuted this misconception along with a bunch of other misconceptions in several programs. But inshallah, I will brief you about its answer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Brother Muhammad from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. Brother Muhammad Rafa, how are you? <coughs> yeah, alhamdulillah, how are you, Sheikh? I'm fine, alhamdulillah, barakallah feek. My question is about the verbal will or expressed intentions of a mother who passed away recently. She was expressing her uh, intentions to give uh, a part of her jewelry to one of her sons. She had three sons and one daughter. This third son was the one who was staying with her and taking care of her physically and financially mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. So she told her husband and her daughter that from her jewelry, about 40% of the weight of the total jewelry uh, should go to her third son before distributing the balanced jewelry among other children. No. So, uh, it was not a written will, it was told few months before her uh, death. So, uh, how should we go about it? Should we take it as a um, legal will in Islamic uh, perspectives? Should we implement it? Or, uh, what to do with that and طيب. how to convince other children. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith, La wasiyyata li warith. It is not permissible to write a will nor to grant the will to one of the ears. In your case, there is, um, it's, it's a special case, but the, the hukm is still the same. Why? You say that one of your brothers who was looking after your mother in her sickness, and he was supporting her financially and taking care of her. And this is his duty, and the duty of every child of hers. So she wanted to compensate him. Had she given him in her life an amount of gold or money that she assumed that it would compensate you know, some of his spending, that is permissible. And it would not be injustice. Why? Because she knows that he's you know, supporting her financially, more than others, so she was compensating for him. No problem. But once she died, wealth does not belong to her anymore. Rather, it belongs to all the ears. And the solution is, number one, this wasiyah would not be honored. Because it undergoes the hukm of the inheritance law. She left some money, it must be distributed after the wasiyah and after the settling the debt. 
but the wasiyah is invalid according to the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. Because the beneficiary of the will is one of the, uh, in, uh, the ears. The alternative or the solution that perhaps you, your brothers and your sisters can give whatever amount of the inheritance as a gift to the brother who is looking after his mother. If you want to do that with a good will, that is permissible. But you are not required to do that. And the wasiyah is not required to be fulfilled because it is in contradiction with the text. لا وصية لوارث And add to that, brothers and sisters, it's an honor for me to look after my mother. And as long as I can afford it financially, it's a plus for me, it's an honor. Having my mother in my house is a blessing that my brothers are deprived from. Spending from my wealth on any of the parents who are getting old, binding their medications, supporting them financially at this old age, is the greatest blessing. What gold, what jewelry, what inheritance that you're talking about. You know how many calamities that Allah protected you from? Or again, it's because of having your mother staying with you and you're looking after her. You know how many blessings that Allah showered you, your children, your wife, and your whole household because of looking after your mother and she is staying with you in her sickness? So we don't have to look at it like materialistically. In the past, when the Muslim ummah was really practicing the deen, people would take this as an honor. But in a very materialistic world, everything is how much? She stayed with me for a year, so how much would you give me extra? It's your duty. It is your duty. So now if you guys would like to compensate the brother and give him a gift or some of the jewelry with a good will, not as of fulfilling her will, then it is permissible. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brother Mustafa from Nigeria. Ayyum. Naam. Salaamu alaykum, Mustafa. Salaamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, I wish it. Naam. Salaamu alaykum. Thank you very much for your program. We are enjoying your program very much here in Nigeria. Alhamdulillah. I'm pushing you May Allah accept. Go ahead. Is it possible that you can to pray for a week? The same month and then the same month. Yeah, it is possible and permissible, no problem. Barakallah feek Mustafa. And include us in your dua in Taraweeh and in Tahajjud. Ali, brother Ali who lives in Norway says, Can I give the fidya to a non-Muslim, the fidya for not fasting? Of course, we talk repeatedly about the alternative for not fasting for elders or senile people who cannot afford fasting, or people with chronic disease. They are not expected to recover. May Allah give them shifa. But in this case, they should right away give the fidya. It is possible to gather 30 people in the beginning of the month, in the middle of the month, by the end of the month, and feed 30 people. It is permissible to give half sa of food, of rice, and otherwise, maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit of meat or chicken, along with that two people, whether raw or cooked, that's possible and permissible for each person, half sa, which is like one and a half kilogram. But can I give it to a non-Muslim? The vast majority of the fuqaha are of the view that all the mandatory zakawat and the mandatory sadaqat, such as sadaqatul fitr, and the fidya, and the kafara, the ransom, and the expiations, such as in making an oath, not fulfilling the oath, and the fidya for not fasting must be only given to whatever is wajib must be given only to Muslims. Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him, said that it is permissible to give the kafara of the oath for instance, which is also feeding three masakin to a non-Muslim. His student, one of his best students, Al-Imam Abu Yusuf, may Allah have mercy on him, opposed him and said no, only in the voluntary sadaqat, not in the mandatory, not in the vow, not in the ransoms or the kafarat, or the penalties, such as uh, in uh, the penalties which we have for innocence in violating anything in, uh, in hajj, in ihram, and the fidya for uh, the kafara for violating one's oath, and so on. So the more right view that al-fidya should be given only to Muslims. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Amber from K say Salam alaikum Amber. Walaikum salam Sheikh. Uh, how are you Sheikh? I'm fine alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. I, re I, I, I enjoy watching your show. Mashallah it's, uh, it's a great show. May Allah accept. Barakallahu feek. And very educating yes. And I follow you on uh, Facebook also. I um, always receive guidance from you mashallah. Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you. May Allah bless you and your family. Um, Sheikh, I just wanted to ask, like, um, I, I want to go for Umrah, and um, somehow, for some reasons, uh, uh, my husband cannot accompany me. I, am, I live in Kobar. Can I leave from Kobar by air with my mother-in-law? Um, a friend will pick me from uh, Jeddah, take us to Mecca. Can I perform Umrah this way? Tay, barakallahu feek, sister Amber. In fact, the vast majority of the Jews are of the view that it is not permissible for a woman to travel alone without a male mahram. Some of the scholars say for Umrah and Hajj along with safe company, it is permissible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Barakallahu fiki, Sister Amber. Um, Sister Aisha, her question is, can I visit a gynecologist while fasting? Will a physical examination void my fast? I, I love the way that the sister presented the question. This is the right way. You know, by saying that visiting a gynecologist, this is a metaphor. Everybody understand, what would you visit a gynecologist for? So, now, my answer is concerning what you people know. Whenever a woman visits a gynecologist and have the physical examination with that violent fasting, if the instrument is right, no, it will not invalidate fasting. If the gynecologist have to use Vaseline or oil or lubricant, and that goes inside the woman in the office, that would violate fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is best. We're going to take a short break. And inshallah, we'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. And while waiting, make istighfar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Do you know what Islam is? It's a way of life for all. It is taught in the Quran, big and small. Do you know what Islam is? It's a way. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother Abdurrahim McCarthy coming to you from the studios in London, where I'm filming my new TV show Tarbiya for Huda TV. In Tarbiya, we're going to take an in-depth look into how the Muslim makes Tarbiya of himself, how he educates himself and trains himself according to the Qur'an and to the authentic Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're going to see how the Qur'an and how the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam trained the Muslim. And we're going to see the impact that this Tarbiya had on the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that made them the greatest nation known to mankind. Tarbiya to revive ourselves and to revive our Ummah. Tarbiya only on Huda TV during the month of Ramadan. Don't miss it. A way of life, a way of life. Blessed month has dawned upon us with its merits and blessings combined. In it, the Quran was revealed to Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon his soul. Without Iman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, in this blessed month of Ramadan, we need to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, what we're trying to get out of this blessed month, and what we're going to do after this blessed month of Ramadan. Please join me live every Saturday and Sunday from 1 to 2 o'clock GMT on the program Ramadan Spirit. We're going to have with us Sheikh Haytham Al-Haddad, Dr. Saeed Al-Qadi, Imam Wasim Kensum, and Sheikh Alamgir Ali live in London. And we're going to speak about these important topics. Please do join me then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Blessed month has dawned upon us with its merits and blessings combined. In it the Quran was read.
يا ربي صلي عليه وسلم يا ربي بلي على شفاعته يا ربي خصه بالفضيلة يا ربي بلي على شفاعته يا ربي خصه بالفضيلة Allah the Almighty, bless your brother Muhammad, his family and companions, give them your mercy. Allah the Almighty, bless your brother Muhammad, his family and companions, give them your mercy. Oh Allah, please sound through him his intercession for us. Oh Allah, please raise his place. He said, You oh Allah. Oh Allah, please sound through him his intercession for us. Oh Allah, please raise his place beside you, oh Allah. Allah, le plus grand. Bénis le prophète Mohammed, vous toujours près de lui, ses compagnons et familles. Oh Allah, donnez-nous ces bénédictions d'aimer et vous réservez à lui tout le bien. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. I believe we have a caller, Sister Ummu Fawziya. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Ummu Fawziya. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have a question. If I am a revert, right? If I fast, I was pregnant twice before and I didn't know that I had to fast during the month of Ramadan. And is there some kind of expiation or something I can do in order to make up for this? Okay, inshallah, once you give birth and once you can fast, you can start making up the missed fasting, either by fasting Monday, Thursdays, or fasting every other day, or whenever you can feel uh, fast uh, will be affordable for you, especially during winter when the daytime is kind of short. But once you accepted Islam, Fasting during Ramadan is mandatory. Alhamdulillah, so long as you're healthy, you have to make up the missed days. May Allah keep you steadfast and congratulations for your pregnancy. May Allah give you safe delivery as well. Thank you, Sister Ummu Fawzi. Brother Sulaiman from United Arab Emirates who called earlier. A part of his question also was concerning uh, if a woman who is divorced three times, for instance, and now she married somebody else, but she had children from the first husband, is he still financially responsible for his children? Of course. They are your ra'iyah and you are supposed to provide them with the child support until they grow up and they become independent. Barakallah feek. As a matter of fact, I would like to inform you that the custody of the children would be given to the wife so long as she does not get married. But if she marries, then the custody will be given to her mother. Uh, if she is not there or if she is not interested, then you will take over of the custody. And in either case, even if they are under the custody of their mother or their grandmother, the maternal grandmother, the financial support is fully upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Nadia from the case A. Alaykum alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have a question about the confusion about my mind. I'm going to ask you a little bit longer, but I'll ask only one question. Uh, is, uh, I always feel everything, everything that it is going in for the showing off. Whatever I am doing, I feel that it is showing off. So I want to ask you, the, um, uh, like for example, I, I go to market uh, for prayer, but because I know this uh, in the home it is uh, better, but I go because I feel more uh, in that. But still at the same time, I feel that maybe I am showing off. Uh, like a small example, I'll give you that if, for example, uh, the Sajjah Tala would come, 
I uh, I know I am not Arabic, but I, I love to go in sujood by myself where instead of watching the others, that uh, everyone goes. Sister so Nadia. Imam is, uh, before Imam is uh, going, to, uh, before Imam starts praying, I search in the uh, um, Quran and uh, find out the ayat, and I keep it in my mind that when this ayah will come, I'm going to find that at work. So, but, Sister Sister Nadia, I would like to ask you a question. Is this a feeling that you feel or this is a reality? You are afraid that you are shown off. You are afraid that your deed will be void and you will not be rewarded for it. Or this is what you actually um, have in mind that you read in the Quran so that people would say, MashaAllah, she's a pious woman. We're going to attend uh, the prayer in the masjid so that people would say she is a pious woman. Which one? No, no, I'm not going because of that. I go because of, um, hello? Yeah, I'm not going. I like to go from the beginning, okay? Even when I ask uh, Allah, in, uh, for example, in, uh, um, I know, I know, uh, in uh, secret, that, uh, give me uh, rid of this area uh, or uh, any level. But I feel always, but I'm, to that direction, I'm not in uh, candidate that is sure. Sister but Nadia. After doing, always it comes. Sister so Nadia. Assalamu alaikum. I actually asked you the question and I expected the answer. And I asked the question which I expected its answer in order to assure you that this condition is not showing off. This condition of being afraid of showing off, being worried is actually healthy. But you shouldn't be paranoid. You shouldn't take it to another level. And this other level which a shaitan meant, which is to make you quit. Okay, I ain't reading Quran. Why? Because if I read the Quran, it will be shown off. This is exactly what the shaitan, what Satan is after. Make you think about it all the time. Anything that you do, even when you pray in private at home. That's another question. You say you pray at home and you feel shown off before whom? So if it is the fear of maybe you'll be shown off, this is healthy. But do not let it go to the next stage where it becomes actually... Uh, a, a, a disease and, and Satan will convince you I would rather not do anything because it's shown off Alhamdulillah Shukullah and ask Allah with the following dua Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushika bika shayan a'lamu wa astaghfiruka lima la a'lamu it will be a kafara and a ransom for even if shown off happen accidentally Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Elias from United Arab Emirates Assalamu alaikum uh, Sheikh, I have a question uh, with regards to the time for breaking of uh, the the, um, the fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but basically we, we live in a place that's surrounded by several uh, masjids, and um, basically at the time of Maghrib, we can hear the adhan from all, all the masjids, but obviously at different time intervals. So my question is, um, at what point do we actually break our fast? Is it when we hear the very first adhan, irrespective of how far the masjid is from our home, or, or the closest masjid, or is, is there a, a, another criteria for this? Jazakallah. <laughs> Elias, once you hear the adhan from any masjid, you can go ahead and break your fast. All the masjid are trustworthy, supposedly, and they go by the exact time. But if somebody, it happened once, that somebody completely messed up, his clock, sometimes there is a time saving and so on. So he was missed. And he called the Adhan an hour earlier. He cannot miss that. Everybody knows the sun is still out there. So you didn't say, well, the Sheikh said, break the fast once you hear the Adhan. He made an error. Okay? So we would rather, we would rather make sure that if all the Masajid, Alhamdulillah, Shukla, following the right perspective and they are calling Adhan on time, it doesn't matter, whichever masjid calls Adhan first and you hear, you break your fast. Yesterday while I was sitting in the masjid, the Mu'adhan was saying, did you hear the Adhan? Did any masjid call Adhan yet? So there are some masjid, some Mu'adhan will be extra cautious. He doesn't want to go first. Rather he would wait for another masjid. It doesn't mean that he is better or he is more accurate. Rather, he took a safer side to follow somebody else. So once you hear the Adhan, you're eligible to break your fast. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brother Nasir from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. I'm fine. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Barakallah feekum. 
Shaikh, uh, last time I asked you one question, but it was uh, misunderstood by you, I think so. What was the question? The question was regarding the property I have it, and I have I had already rented to the bank. Is it earning is halal or haram? That's what I want to ask. Okay, would you please repeat the question and explain it furthermore? Please, sir. The thing is, I have my property, and I have already rented to the bank. Okay. Now, and uh, last time I heard your uh, explanation regarding the bank, anything from the bank is haram. So that's what you I rented, the rent is also the haram. You rented the property to the bank, right? Yes. Yeah. To do what with it? I am getting the rent. Okay. Uh, so the bank is using business. your building. To run their business. Yeah. If I know beforehand that I'm going to be renting the property to a bank, I would not rent it to a, a conventional bank. Okay? It is a conventional bank. Well, this is what I said. If I know beforehand that, well, somebody is going to open a nightclub in this property, okay, I'm not going to rent it to them. Somebody is going to open a conventional bank to run riba business 24-7. In this property, I'm not going to rent it to them. What is the reference? The ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah. We should not help each other in committing sins. We should not assist people who do wrong and say it's none of my business. Rather, each person should be proactive and enjoying what is right, and forbid what is evil, and abstain from assisting the wrongdoers. Barakallah feek Nasr. Sister Ummu Amir from Kuwait. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I just wanted to ask about um, the prayer for the Al Qadr. Mm -hmm. A woman, a woman who made the sincere intention of completely completing the last 10 days of um, Laylatul Qadr, and in between, she had, you know, the menstruation. Mm. How will she miss the blessings as how it was stated in the Holy Quran? And the follow-up question is, what can she do more to have these blessings? Bye. The menses would not affect your word. Once you formulated an intention that you wanted to pray the whole last 10 nights of Ramadan, that word is guaranteed, even if you fail to do it because of an external factor such as the menses. Sickness. The person is in a coma. The person would still get the reward. In addition to, the menses would only prevent the woman from praying at night, right? But you can uh, recite your adhkar. You can listen to the Quran, the audio Quran, and this is also a great act of worship. You can make istighfar. And Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the sound hadith, O oh Prophet of Allah, what if it is Laylatul Qadr? I know that it is Laylatul Qadr. What should I do? She, he said, you should keep saying, Allahumma innaka afoon tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. O oh Allah, you are the one who pardons and you love to pardon, so pardon me. Very beautiful, very beautiful and amazing dua. So keep in saying this dua along with other duas, listening to the recitation of the Quran, reciting your adhkar, making istighfar, these are all acts of worship. Give it in a charity and thank you for reminding me with this very interesting uh, procedure and practice that I would like everyone to do even though we only have a few nights left. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr that the worship that is done on Laylatul Qadr is better than a worship which is done over 83 years and a couple months continuously 24-7 uh, It doesn't only uh, focus on one particular ibadah no variety of worship prayers, recitation of Quran, istighfar helping others, i'tikaf uh, giving in a charity so make sure that every single night, on every single night in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, that you give in a charity. Uh, five bucks, 10 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever you can afford. Because whatever you be given on the 10 nights, this is one thing that you should not miss. Each night, 
Definitely Laylatul Qadr is one of those nights. So the sadaqah which will be given on that night is better than the sadaqah which is given over 83 years and a couple of months. So there are a lot of things and acts of worship that you can actually do, Sister Umm Amir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Ali from Norway. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. How are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. I still have your question about the mouthwash alcohol based. Do you have any other questions? Uh, yeah, I, I said maybe you forget about it, but I have another question. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I was asking about uh, if uh, a woman uh, who, she doesn't, who doesn't give hug to her husband uh, and what is her hukmu? Uh, especially, and even if she doesn't want to give permission uh, to marry second wife, <laughs> what is her husband? And do you really need her permission? Barakallah feek Ali. Zakallah khair. May Allah guide all of us to what is best. Akhi, I can imagine, um, you know, uh, a normal woman who would say to her husband, okay, go ahead, honey, and marry somebody else. This is very normal for every woman to be jealous, to be protective of her husband. So I should not expect from my wife to be abnormal, to say, Habibi, go ahead and marry. No, in this case, I don't think she is normal. But, uh, you know, maybe by sharing with her your causes of remarrying, and as you know that it is not a condition for the validity of the second marriage to get the consent of the wife. Yet, I always say it is very, very important to inform her so that you would not enter into a series of lies. Okay? Barakallah feek. If that is the only concern that you have in mind and you think that she's not giving you your right because of that, um, you heard my answer. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ For women, there are rights. For wives, there are rights. Exactly similar to the duties that they owe to their husbands. It's mutual rights and obligations. And every time I think about asking my wife for one of my rights, I also think about whether I have fulfilled all her rights or not. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Fatima from USA. Fatima. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, Dr. Sabah, I want to know, um, since we have um, the Sharia law that says alcohol-based mouthwash um, available here in the U.S.A., is it okay to use it before the fasting or during any other day during the year? Okay. Barakallah fiqh, sister Fatima. This question uh, was actually asked yesterday by the brother from uh, Norway. We do have actually two different opinions with regards to the impurity of alcohol and intoxicants. Is it physically impure? If you go with this opinion, then of course you're not allowed to put it in your mouth. I'm not drinking it, but I'm not allowed to uh, put any impurity in my mouth. There is another view which says, no, alcohol is not impure physically. And I, I respect this view very much, you know, and uh, it's very uh, powerful, very strong because of the evidence that it is not impure physically. But in this case, I would avoid, I would avoid using a, a mouthwash, which is alcohol-based, because actually it's like 75% alcohol in, 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 in the mouthwash. So I would avoid it as a mean of precaution to be in the safe side. Especially nowadays, you do have in Walgreens, you have in HEB, you do have in many pharmacies uh, a mouthwatch which is uh, not alcohol, which is alcohol-free, I mean. So use alcohol-free to be in the safe side, whether fasting or otherwise. Barakallahu fikum. Jumana, for your brother who is 18, he should attend the prayer in the masjid. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many a hadith sometimes encouraged, sometimes ordered, sometimes warned against not praying in the masjid. So the order was to pray in the masjid in congregation, especially said that the masjid is next door and nearby. Whether the prayer will be valid or not, if the person still prayed at home, it will be valid, but he will be missing 26 degrees greater word than if he prayed 
uh, in the masjid because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said salatul mar'i fi jama'a tafdulu salat al-fadhi bi sab'in wa ashreena daraja praying in congregation in the masjid is 27 times degree greater than praying by yourself uh, brother Muhammad had two questions answering the dua and his dua is not being answered for me my dua is being always answered alhamdulillah not because I'm a sheikh and not because I think myself special rather every Muslim should believe that their dua is always answered in the sound hadith which is narrated by Abu Sa'id in Al-Khudri may Allah be pleased with him النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد ما من مسلم يدعو بدعوة ليس فيها إث ولا قطيعة رحم if any Muslim any Muslim not necessarily a sheikh or a mullah or a peer or a bikshah any Muslim who makes dua and say يا الله and this dua does not contain any violation such as asking Allah to hurt somebody to kill somebody and to do anything uh, bad to any person without any justification or qati'at rahim or to sever your relations with your family members Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely answer his dua but in one of three ways number one an instant response Ya Allah give me a righteous child and mashallah next morning after the day of Arafah uh, he returned home and his wife conceived alhamdulillah shukla this is a way to answer the dua innocently after drinking from Zamzam water on the day of Arafah at the night prayer in, in sujood. The second is an yasrifa anhu min su'i mithlaha. To block an evil that was about to befall you equivalent to the goodness that you have asked for. Or to save it for you, to benefit you on the day of judgment. So the dua will be always answered. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ سُرَةْ غَافِرْ Your Lord said, ادْعُونِي Supplicate to me, invoke me, I shall answer your prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept and answer our prayers. We definitely ran out of time. We would love to see you tomorrow, inshallah, on the 24th day of the blessed month of Ramadan. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's peace, Allah is my heart's Test.